guys, real quick, just wanted to shout out our channel sponsor, Max Feeding Rods. They sponsor the build and the channel, so I wanted to shout them out. They have really awesome turbos, like the one I use. I use the GT35 on mine. Really reliable and super cheap. If you guys want a discount on any of their products, uh, check the description down below. But other than that, let's get into the video. What's going on, guys? DG Whips are back again with another video. Now, today I'm going to be giving, a, giving an overall guide on how to boost your car. I know some of you guys have finally saved up enough money and now you want to turbo your car. Um, you've been wanting to do it for a while and now you're excited to do it. You finally have the funds. Uh, maybe you don't know how to go about it and you're doing some research. I'm here to help you guys out on that because I have done it myself. I have a turbo G35. Mine has been boosted for over a year and I haven't blown it up yet. So I feel like I'm qualified to talk about boosting a little bit. And I'm just here to help you guys out and get you guys on the right path and make sure you don't blow your car up, right? So let's go ahead and dive into it. By the way, if you're new to my channel, you're not familiar with me and but you like the content, uh, do me a favor, subscribe, like the video, put the notification bell on in case you wanna be notified for any more content. So step one, which is extremely important and is gonna save you some headache, is do your research and do more research. And once you've done some research, uh, do some more research, right? Uh, this is what I did. I pretty much for, before I was able to afford um, doing this, I just constantly was learning, learning, doing research techniques everything I needed, how boosted a car works, the ins and outs, what's reliable, how much things costed, uh, what I'm gonna need to replace, things I can leave alone. You need to know all these things. And there is a lot to learn and it can be very intimidating at first, but as long as you take your time and do your research, learn a little bit at a time, there's plenty of information on YouTube, Google, Reddit, on all this stuff. And don't just listen to me. Uh, it's important to gather information from everybody because some people can misinform you on things. Some people can know a lot. Um, so just gather a bunch of information and that way you will have a, an infinite arsenal of info and that's going to save you some headache because if you don't know what you're doing, it's very easy to mess things up and cause catastrophic failure, especially when it comes to boost. Your car is not originally meant for boost and you boost it and you do something wrong, um, blowing your car up is going to be super easy, right? So <clears throat> do your research. You can check out my channel. I have some tips and tricks uh, specifically for like this car, but I do, it is um, useful for all cars for boosting and everything. So do plenty of research, do not skip out on that. This is what I've done. I probably had like a year of research and learned all the ins and outs of boosting and everything. Um, all the kits, uh, budgets, everything that I would need, to, everything that I would have needed to know. And uh, that really helped me out. And I believe that is why I have not blown my car up yet. So uh, knock on, knock on wood or whatever. But now once you do your research, the next step is actually to plan everything out. And you need to plan everything very specifically and very well. It's hard to take action without like some sort of plan, right? Otherwise you're just going to be, it's gonna, whatever you're doing is gonna be ineffective, right? So you do need to plan things out. This is a very complicated and tedious process and there are very small things you need to take into consideration and things that are easy to mess up. So what is your budget? What are your goals? Uh, that's pretty important because that's gonna affect a lot of things. If your goal is just low boost, but you want your car to be boosted, maybe get that nice little power gain, but nothing too crazy. Uh, you definitely can do this on a budget. Now, if you're boosting like a Chevrolet, now, if you're boosting like a Corvette C8 or like a Lamborghini Huracan, you're probably not going to do that for like a couple grand. Uh, it's just the nature of the car you have. But if you have like an older Japanese car like mine or a Civic or a Miata, you definitely can do that for pretty cheap. You can even do that for less than two grand reliably if you really wanted to. From my personal experience, uh, because of how I wanted to do it and my goals, I was able to just parts and labor wise do this for, I believe, like $2,600. Uh, that includes all the parts. I did most of the labor myself besides fabricating the exhaust and the tune. Uh, with the tune, it's, it goes a little over uh, like three grand. But um, just the parts and everything, that was like 2,600. And this is a fully custom kit. This is a fully custom rear mount uh, kit. Now, you obviously, you don't have to do that. Maybe you want a bolt-on kit, which will be easier uh, for install. However, nothing's really going to be fully bolt-on when you're boosting. So do just take into consideration some things are going to have to be uh, modified and adjusted for because your car was not originally meant for boost, so you will have to accommodate a lot. If you're doing a cheap range, you wanna keep it budget friendly and you're not trying to do a lot of power. Um, if you're doing the average car like this, you definitely can do that for pretty cheap. You could even have easily gone cheaper that I have done. There's just certain things I wanted in order and certain things that I personally required. So I did uh, decide to spend the money on it. I have to speak very in general and broad due to the fact that I don't know your exact build. However, again, this is where the research comes in. Research your specific car, what your car can handle, what you're going to need to upgrade and everything. And you will know uh, how much money you're going to need to spend and all the parts you will need and, and et cetera, right? If you're trying to do really big power and you money's not really an issue, 
I would I'd probably recommend getting a bolt-on kit and then having a professional shop install it and then getting a good tune and then you pretty much will have no issues. Also upgrade your engine if you're trying to do like really big power. Again, there's no limit on the money you can spend really. You're gonna start upgrading hoses and lines and everything. You're gonna be really rebuilding the car once you're trying to do serious power. So <clears throat> if money's not an issue, go ahead, spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars doing that. I'm um, just giving, there is a wide variety of what you can do. There's, there's no limits to uh, boost, guys. Now the next step is actually just going to be, make sure your car is ready for boost, right? Uh, if you skip this step, uh, things are just gonna go bad and haywire really quick. Boost is a lot of strain on your engine, especially if your engine is older and it wasn't originally meant for it. Make sure you have all new sensors. There's no leaks. You are probably going to sprain some leaks uh, after boost. That's definitely what happened to me. I still have leaks I'm dealing with, uh, oil leaks um, specifically. So make sure you take care of all those. Replace all your gaskets. One big tip specifically for all cars, ventilate your crankcase. If you don't, you're going to blow seals immediately as soon as you hit boost. I learned this the hard way, so make sure you ventilate your crankcase get a catch can, do all the necessary prep work beforehand. If you don't have good tires and you start doing boost, you're not gonna be able to put any of that power to the ground. So I recommend upgrading your tires and getting good tires so you can put grip down. You can get wider tires, you can get expensive tires. Again, this is all depending on your budget and this can get very expensive very quick. But I'm just letting you guys know, prep work is very key uh, before you boost your car. So make sure there's no check engine light, make sure you have no issues with the car running. The car needs to be and pretty much 100% shape, suspension-wise, mechanically, um, and everything, before you start trying to throw more power into it. More power is going to make any issue become more present and more of, more of an issue and will make things worse and can cause catastrophic failure. So make sure to, you, you avoid that. If you do, if you follow all those steps correctly, the install will be, if you do it yourself, will be a little tedious. It's going to take you some time. If you've been working on cars for a little bit, maybe you've done some timing belts, changed radiators, and you've done worked on cars yourself, I would actually entertain installing it yourself. It is very possible and it's actually not that difficult, I would say, if you are mechanically inclined and you're handy. And now if you are like afraid of doing brakes and stuff like that, maybe not do this yourself. It's gonna be a little too much intimidating. It's a long process. But if you take things step by step, it's actually not, it's relatively straightforward as long as you know what you're doing. I did it myself. There was a lot of like um, hiccups and things and things I needed to replace, things I went wrong. Um, again, I blew like blue seals. I didn't know I needed to ventilate the crankcase. Uh, so I had to do that, fix that. Little hose clamps, couplers. There'll be stuff like uh, things like that you need, especially if you do a custom kit like mine. A lot of stuff you're gonna have to improvise for and things you won't really know you're gonna need until you run into it. Install will take you a little bit. Don't expect to do this overnight or in a day or over a weekend. This might take you a few weeks. It took me, I wanna say a month and a half uh, to fully install everything and get everything correctly to where I had no issues. Once you do everything correctly and you take your time, uh, it should be relatively reliable, right? Now, once you do this, the next step is pretty much just the tune, right? Um, do your research on this again. The tune is going to make or break everything. Um, if you do all this and you get a bad tune, it's just gonna blow up anyway, regardless of how good of a shape uh, your car is in mechanically. So make sure you find a good tuner, do your research. You want a professional qualified tuner who knows what they're doing, who's familiar with the, the software you wanna use, familiar with your vehicle and everything. That is extremely important. The tune is usually gonna be pretty expensive. I spent about 700 for mine. Um, some people you might be spending upwards of a thousand dollars uh so i do just take that into consideration that is going to be a little pricey but it, that is very important you do not want some 200 dollar tuner that maybe has started tuning yesterday you don't want to do that right so but once you do all that now you have a boosted car and now um you got now you got blow off sounds now you can pull up to the meet you can flex you can stunt um you maybe you can get that girl you want i don't know whatever your goal is right now that you're boosted and you took your time it's going to be well worth it guys and the boost never gets old my personal recommendations don't overdo it on power uh it's very easy to get the boost bug and want to turn out the boost and everything your car's just going to blow up and if your car blows up you're going to be sad it's going to cost a lot of money and then you can't enjoy the car right um that's why i was very careful and cautious and i under did my power goals a little bit because i didn't want to blow my car up right away even though i do plan on doing a built engine and built tranny and everything and getting some nice power goals eventually but i did just want to enjoy the car as is because when i start doing that i'm gonna be spending upwards of like ten thousand dollars so yeah uh do your research figure out a plan prepare take your time on install get a nice tune that's pretty much it guys it's pretty straightforward i hope this video really helped you guys i hope uh, it helps inspire you and i hope it helps your build become successful 
and I hope it becomes as easy as possible. There were some things I had to run into and deal with that I wish I had known before. So hopefully this helps you guys a little bit. I hope I didn't miss anything. Comment down below any questions you have about anything. Uh, I'll be happy to answer. But yeah, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, don't forget to follow my Instagram. You can also DM me there if you have any questions. I don't respond to comments. I get a lot of comments and it can be hard to uh, it can be hard to keep up. So just feel free to feel free to bug me on there. I will respond eventually. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys again for watching. And until then, see you guys next time.